Hello, and welcome back to Elden Ring. I threw myself off a cliff so I could get rid of the thing to put my armor back on. So, last time we went through Lamenter's Jail along with your ruined forge lava intake. Two different minor dungeons that both took like 25 minutes each, so how minor they were, really up for debate. But in those we got Lamenter's Mask, which is kind of like the thing that turns you into a dragon in Dark Souls. We ran around the second, the fiery forge area with this on. It looked pretty cool. We also got the Smith Script Dagger, which is a throwing blade. And the Anvil Hammer, a colossal weapon. Though, again, I feel like I missed something there, but I can't quite put my finger on why. Though, I think it may have just been the lack of a boss, or my lack of ability to find a boss, at least. But we also got the Clarifying Horn Charm plus two for maximum sleep and madness resistance. So here, we are by Saint Onsbach, Sir Onsbach, to tell him about these things that we found. Righteous tarnished. What brings you here? Oh, you must mean some more. Some more is a kind and stalwart ally. It provisions our little outfit. Some more traffics with the forager brood. His brethren, who collect supplies from all corners of the land. No doubt they find inspiration in his many virtues. These are not your foes, Tarnished. Should you spot any forager brood, be sure to mind your manners. So... There were Forger Brood at cookbooks that were given to us by the little lanky bug dudes that you typically see in Kaelid. The pests, I think they're called. The ones with the glaives and they, like, squirm around on the ground. So, he's one of them, apparently, under that armor. Welcome. Oh, I know. Give this to Diolier. He asked me to find it. I finally found it. Black Syrup. I don't know who Talier is. Many things we have found. I like finding things. For you, Lady Leda, her allies, and the Forager Brood. Things bring joy to all. Okay. This looks cool. Anyways. Goodbye. Uh, black syrup. I'm assuming that would be a key item since he told us to give it to someone else. Yep. Something more asked to deliver to Talier. I still don't know who that is. An ebony black syrup held in an enlarged jar. Mo more asked that this be delivered to Talier. I don't know who they are or where they are, so that's probably not going to happen. Because I'm not going to look anything up. But an unknown liquid apparently gathered and aged by the forger brood. Okay. Righteous tarnished. What brings you here? Well... I am much obliged to think there was a cross left in such a faraway place and the deep purple water lilies would be blooming there. This can only mean kindly Mikola has divested himself even of that. His adoring other self, his blossom of slumber. Righteous tarnished, what brings you here? 
Okay. And I was also looking in the map and realized there's this thing and a map fragment here, but I don't know how to get there. So... Gonna look for that. I mean, we can take a quick look around here. But I don't want to spend a whole lot of time looking for it if I can't quickly find a way for it. Because... I don't want a whole lot of time to be dedicated to just looking around and not actually making some kind of progress or oh yeah, we're not getting anywhere over there from here. But And so I don't know how the river cave. It says cave, but it doesn't have a cave icon. So I don't know what that's about. Well, if we head straight forward. Well, that's in the opposite direction of where we want to go. Question is, can we go all the way to this? Either that way or this way. I don't know if that's possible. Uh, this is sending us inland. So that's definitely not the way to go. So we can head this way just a wee bit. And see if it gets us anywhere. But... Don't feel particularly good about it. Since we've been here before. I don't remember the specifics of it, though I do remember that this is where we got the two-headed turtle talisman for, like, maximum or even better stamina recovery speed, which was very cool. And I remember very much getting lost in here, which was not very fun. I do remember seeing the crab multiple times. So it's right through here. Couldn't get off torrent. But yeah, that doesn't actually get us anywhere because it's just a dead end. So there might be like an illusory wall there. But none of the walls look suspicious to me. And I remember that I did find an illusory wall because a wall looks suspicious to me. So, don't know how to get to here. And again, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I might, after this part, to look around, see if I can find anything, but... 
for now. I think we are just going to head back to Castle Front and start making our way into here. Also, we have a level and I forgot to level up. Castle Ensis. Hello, Mr. Troll. Ow. Sir, that is incredibly rude. And I would kindly ask that you get down onto my level. I was about to say, I know that even though you're down, those can still come after me. Uh-oh. Oof. It has been forever since I fought one of those guys. And I did not remember the timing. Royal Magic Grease. Coats Armin inflicting heavy magic damage. Okay. Solidified knot grease made from a mixture of magically resonant materials, craftable item. Coats Armin adding heavy magic damage to attack. The effect lasts only for a short time. Believed to have once been bestowed upon the lower ranking carrion knights in lieu of the fellowship's characteristic swords. And no torrent for this area. Sad to say. So we can go... It looks like left, forward, or right. An enemy came out of the right, so... Shadow Realm Rune 4. That looks like everything. I wonder if the giant is a one-time only enemy. Because he dropped items guaranteed straight into our inventory when he died. Or if he's an every time enemy because he's he's big but he's just a normal enemy effectively speaking. Okay. Oh. Castle Ensis. Alright so Fort of Reprimand and Castle Ensis not the same place. Two totally different areas. Good to know. And... Hi. No, oh, hi. Why would you lock on to him? Ow. Oh, dog. Sir, please. Dog, you can die. Okay. Anyways, so the reason why I'm looking off to the right a lot is because I only have left ear audio, so I can listen for if there's anything going on in the background. Mesmer Soldier Spear, Strength and Dex. It is a great spear. Weapon used by soldiers who serve Mesmer the Impaler, a great spear with a steel blade worn from use. Being made for overwhelming onslaughts, attack with this weapon can be charged to unleash consecutive attacks. Oh, so charge attack is a double poke and then the follow up is a slash poke. So it has a unique heavy attack. 
which works both one and two handed. Neat. So we can go the cave or the ladder or the cave or the stairs. I want to go stairs first because this looks like a shorter path. But yeah, so that's why I keep looking off to the right because from an audio perspective, it's a bit of a blind spot for me at this moment. Me lady. Light great sword. I've spent this entire run talking about how I love great swords because they are the best. Light great sword. Listen, heavy longsword plus 25, you might have some competition. That's all I'm saying. Light greatsword sounds so good. But strength and dex scaling, physical damage. A light greatsword that is a sword whose blade matches the length of a greatsword while being constrained to a minimal weight, nicknamed after ladies of noble status for its refined appearance. With cultivated form... One can wield this weapon as swiftly as one might a straight sword. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it does have the... It does have the range of a great sword. And it doesn't have a scabbard. That's something that I talk about a lot, is I prefer weapons to not have scabbards and also really like swords bit of an unconventional way to swing that is very cool It's like refined swipes instead of the just forehead slam. Right. Oh, Two-handed. Okay. Yeah. I said that I'm not using any DLC weapons yet, but I'm definitely not against using any DLC weapons. It's just that Blasphemous Blade is really, really good. Didn't say anything about the long sword, though. And it has impaling thrust, too. And we can still light roll with it. With. So, Milady, Blasphemous Blade, Icon Shield, Beast Champions, that, like, our entire setup. So, this thrust. As the first swing, I really like it. It looks very nice. Might have some trouble hitting like dogs or rats though. The enemies I typically use the long sword for. But that is very, very cool. And like I said, I haven't used any of the DLC weapons like for actual combat yet so I can't say how effective they are there's a knight coming down there's some soldiers over there okay so don't move off to the right good to know Hello. I feel like that should have hit me. I feel like that final swing he did should have hit me. But anyways, Loyal Knight's Cookbook. 
Uh, royal magic grease. All right, so we've already looked at that as a consumable, but that's what lets you craft them. Good, good, good. But like I was gonna say before, the knight showed up. I can't speak to the effectiveness of the weapons because I haven't used any of them, but I can speak to how cool they are and my personal preference to, as to things. And a light greatsword really, like just from first impression, really looks like it would go up my alley. Castle Cross message. Card words coalesce. I abandon it. Here, the flesh of my body. Skadoo tree fragment. Side of grace. So. Uh, Kessel Cross message. Message left by Needle Knight Lita. Again, Needle Knight is a very cool title. Addressed to kindred spirits who also pursue Mikola's trail. Kind Mikola seeks the tower sealed by shadow and the gate of divinity found there. If we are to reach him, we must burn the tree that seals the path. And for that, we require flame. Alright, so both the base game and the DLC require you to get your hands on some kind of special flame to burn something. I'm assuming we'll get to open this later. Hello. 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 Thank you for dying. Mesmer Soldier Greaves. Greaves worn by soldiers who serve Mesmer the Impaler. Impaler, rusted and crusted in filth from fighting an unending war. Alright, let's see. There's one dog. There's a second dog that may be dead, may be sleeping. Alright, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to throw on the blessed blue do talisman. And we're going to pop bestial vitality for health regen. And flame grant me strength for damage. And we're gonna drop in. And we're gonna, we're just gonna start swinging on some dogs. We didn't even need them. We didn't even need the buffs. The dogs decided to take us in a one-on-one. -on -one. That looks like a platforming section. I'm not gonna deal with that. Hello, birds. Wait. Nailed it. Hello, bird. I hope that nothing is here to kill me. As I pick up the starlight shard. So... There's an item over there. I don't know how we would get to that. I don't particularly care because it doesn't look like it's anything of importance. I can very much imagine it being like a pinion feather. Or something else that's not really common, but not really particularly rare or valuable. Turtle, turtle, turtle. Is no, that's nothing. All right, there's a, a ladder there with some blue flames marking it, which I do love blue flames. Blue is one of the coolest colors. That's part of why I use the Beast Champion set. Because of the blue cape. But what's better than blue? Purple. That's why I have St. Trina's torch. 
that and because it scales off faith, which my character is faith. Whereas the blowtorch is intelligence. Small guy, small guy, small guy, small guy. Ow. So that spear let him take a heavy attack from a great sword. This isn't something I typically do. But he will get a rainbow stone out of respect for being able to take that. That looks like the gate. This looks like a thingy, a thingamajig that would open a gate. Lever, that's what they're called. Lever to open the gate. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. I don't see a need for violence here. I don't see why we can't be... Alright. I was gonna say, I don't see why we can't be civilized. Then you actually hit me, so... We got a Mesmer soldier armor. A second copy of that. There's a ladder. We can pick this up. We can take it with us. We can scale the walls. Use to skip a boss. Hello, dog. I was about to say, surely no one would object to that. Surely. The oh, dog came out and bit us. I didn't even get to say it. Alright, I jump and I lose stamina, so something is aggroed onto us. And I don't know what that something would be. Alright. That's just rude. I don't know how to get up there, but I'm assuming it's this way. Oh. There's a ladder. Also, we can move back to this. I really should just have both of them on. There you are. But my other three talismans are just too good. Like, extra defense, extra health, extra equip load, which I need for the Beast Champion set and all this which means more defense. And so it is a slight inconvenient. There's a page up there, good to know. Don't know why you would out yourselves like that, but good to know. And once again, the great swords are busted. But anyways, so, it is a slight inconvenience having to go back and forth. And I should probably get, like, I should probably put the Cerulean Seed tier, or Cerulean Seed Talisman, into storage, so that way I only have to move one instead of two. But I'm willing to accept that small inconvenience. Friendly? Here, I'm going to put my weapons away as a show of good grace, and I'm going to leave those 200 runes to you as a sign of good grace, and I'm going to go this way. I'm assuming... There's no one this way. So, uh, I'm just gonna... 
I hope you don't mind. Like, I know that I said that I was gonna be friendly, and here I am. Ow. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. You can heal. I can heal. That's a lot of damage. I don't see why you would do that. I am not comfortable being there because I could absolutely run off the cliff and that's not something I want. That might be something that you want, but uh, you aggressed on me first by being targetable. Ow. I can't believe my weapon would miss. Blasphemous Blade. You're usually so good. Almost entirely because you're a great sword. But there you go. Moon Rithil's Night Sword. Alright, it is a strength, dexterity, intelligence based colossal sword with physical and magic damage. Great sword embedded with a blue glinstone. The favored weapon of the steadfast carrier knight, Moon Rithil. Moon Rithil was the twin Moon Knight's Chamberlain. She was also a friend to the trolls who served the royal family and proudly wielded their weapons as she fought arm in arm with her gargantuan comrades. Good lore, good lore. A unique skill, tremendous phalanx. I don't see why you can't just have the normal big phalanx, but okay. Skill of the enchanted troll knights created creates a defensive arch of enormous magic Glint blades overhead, which automatically attack nearby foes. Follow up with a strong attack to chain this skill into a lunging thrust. Ah. So that's why it's unique, because it has a follow up attack. Okay. Ah, they're friendly, they're friendly. Hope you don't mind me. Rolana. We're really just throwing names out, aren't we, huh? Enhances attacks executed after maintaining the same stance for a while. Like square off? So we can... Oh, that sure does. Cool. Talisman featuring a gallant portrait of Rolana, the twin moon knight. Enhances attacks executed after maintaining the same stance for a certain length of time. Engraved as a reminder of the unparalleled devotion of those who left their homelands to serve R Rolana. By your leave, we will accompany you wherever your lunar vessel takes you. Lunar vessel, so she's related to Ranala then? Mark. Oh, America, I beg, embrace your child and give us a sign. How long must this holy war stretch on? You say you embrace your child, but which one? So she's got like seven. And I don't think she treats any of them well. Ooh, blue fire. Ow. So. It's just hit me that we're fighting these guys again. Which means she's probably definitely related to Renala in some way, shape, or form. But that doesn't really make sense. At least not to my understanding of the lore, which is not that great, but... 
when you fight Ranala, going to the second phase cutscene, Rani says that she's the last queen of Caria. That's not nice. But... How could she be the last queen if... This is a shortcut, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is! Ah, grating on the ears. That is very grating on the ears. Alright, so we can go out that way, and that... It looks like that goes on for a while. Well, we can't exactly get up, so... Wait, it's like, how would she be related to Ranala if Ranala's the last queen? Unless it's like they're sisters, but Rolana was exiled. And so she's related by blood. But her claim to the throne was denied because she was exiled. I, I don't know how royalty works. I live in the no-monarch country. We don't do kings and queens and don't, don't throw bombs at me. What are you doing? Well, you're dying for one and you're dying for two, so. Guess that checks out. Well, this poor guy went the wrong way. I mean, maybe he was casually trying to avoid me, which makes sense. I have a great sword, but not just any great sword, but one that heals and the icon shield. A great shield that heals. So, checks out, makes sense. I'd try to avoid me too. Not coming to kill me, are you? Imbued sword key. You can get three of those in the base game. Yeah, I used one. Like, I got all three, I used one, so... Still have two left. Right, so... That means that there's going to be use for them here in the DLC. Ooh. Good swing, and ooh, a single bar of stamina is enough to bring them down. You'll love to see it. Alright, still don't know how to get up to where that one sorcery guy was. Because it kind of looked like there was some stuff by him, but... Couldn't see a way to get to him, so... Uh. But I wonder what the imbued sword keys will be... For here. Oh, Side of Grace. I wonder how many you get and how many you need. Because that would be interesting to know if you need more than you actually get. And I think I'm going to start leveling up health because I haven't found anything where I need dexterity or intelligence. And leveling them up doesn't do a whole lot. I'll go the other way first. Yeah, so, I feel like health would be more important for the immediate 
situation. We can drop down onto there. I don't know if that's somewhere we need to be. Somewhere we've already been. I don't know. I don't know. The thing there. Maybe we go from the bottom up. So I thought that we were gonna go, like, drop down, then cross the bridge, and then go down. But I suppose dropping and then entering from this main doorway and going up would make more sense. Giant lobster, hate those things. Don't think we can get down anyways. Oh, that looks like something we've never been to before. Wonder how we get there. A uh, thing way over there. That's just the first one it looks like. The one you see basically right at the beginning. Just wanted to go around it to see if there was anything hidden, but doesn't look like it, so we can move on. I don't know where we're going or what the point of this is. Like, I don't see where we'd go next from here. Unless... See, like... Something like this... Oh, that, this just brings us back to there. Alright, so what's the point of all this, then? I might have missed something, but I don't see the point of that. And still don't know how to get up onto the roof with the guy. The little magic sorcerer guy. Unless there's no way to get up there. In which case, kind of weird that they put an enemy somewhere where you can't get to. I imagine there's probably a way. But... Needle Knight Lita. Is she... I think she's wielding a light greatsword. Right, so we can summon her, because she has a very cool name. And this entire area has been magic, and Taker's cameo doesn't help in a boss. And Blessed New Talesman doesn't really help in a boss, so we're going to throw these on... just to see what happens. And we can pop Beast Shield Vitality. And we can head in. Ralana, Twin Moon Knight. Oh. Well, that was faster. I was about to say, Lita, why are you following me instead of going up to the boss? Oh, she's fast, and she has a lot of health. It doesn't look like she does too much damage, though. If I had known she was going to go down... Ow! But if she... If I knew she was going to go down there... Would have gotten a critical to see how much it did. Alright, time to back up. Ow! Alright, so... Lita's taking 
a lot of damage. More than I would like. Alright, so a single hit doesn't knock her out of the critical state. And she's in phase two. And she's in I'm not joking around anymore mode. And gotta say she looks very cool and she doesn't do that much damage like her damage feels very fair except maybe against Lita like me dying there didn't feel unfair it felt like I just didn't know how or when to dodge or when to avoid, like when to back up. So that didn't feel unfair. That didn't feel like some kind of BS death. That did feel fair. And I know that I have these two on, but Like I said, there have been a few other bosses that have just straight up one-shot me. Whereas she isn't really doing that. Like, she's only done, like, one thing that's taken more than half my health. Before the point where I died. So her damage feels very fair. And she also looks very, very cool. And her attacks are awesome. And, I mean, this is my first time fighting her. Second attempt. Haven't beaten her yet. So obviously I can't give a ton of detailed information or know exactly how well balanced she is or anything like that but just from first impressions she's very good and the only thing that I would say I remember that did a swing around the yep oh that hit far get the critical get the critical get the critical yes but the only thing that I think could or possibly should be changed based on first impressions. Yep, final one is always delayed. I know Elden Ring. Like I said, just from first impression, the only thing that I would change is maybe giving Lita more health. Because I believe Lita was the one that we helped, or the one who helped us. In the other boss fight, the like lion guy. And she died like halfway through the fight. And here she's almost dead. And she is dead. And so I feel like giving Lita just a tiny bit more health. All right, 180K Remembrance of the Twin Moon Knight. Good, 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 good. But I'd say giving her like 15% more health, maybe taking like 5-10% damage away, could probably even her out. Like help Lita be more survivable. 
without making her too powerful. But I could be wrong about that. Like I said, that's just first impressions. But outside of that, very, very cool. Alright. Remembrance of Relana, the twin moon knight hewn into the skidoo tree. The power of its namesake can be unlocked by the finger radiator. Alternatively, it can be used to gain a great bounty of runes. Once a Carrion princess, so she is related, Rolana disavowed her birthright, okay, so she disavowed it instead of being kicked out, and chose to stand at Mesmer's side instead, knowing full well that not even the brilliance of the moon could grant him succor. Before long, she became known as the Sword of Mesmer. Don't see. 10, 25, 35, 45k for her set. Alright, so one dual, like twin light greatswords, strength, dexterity, intelligence, faith. Yes. Two Renala's twin moons, 72 intelligence. I love the moon sorceries, so yes. But. Carrion Light Greatsword embedded with blue glintstone weapon of Rolana the Twin Moon Knight. Two swords as a single armament. When two handing a straight sword engraved with golden flame will be carried in the left hand here and here alone or moon and fire ever together. Unique skill, moon and fire stance. Assume ready stance, sword imbued with magic. Follow up with normal attack to cast glintstone light waves. Alright, so that's the one we did where I paused on the final swing, because I think it was like five swings, and then I dodged, delayed on the last one, because Elden Ring always does that. Or a strong attack to perform a spinning attack that bays the area with flame. So that's something she did in the first attempt when we had her pinned in the corner, and it just exploded the entire arena in fire. Light waves can have up to two follow-up casts with additional inputs. Or Renala's Twin Moons, Sorcery of Relana, the Twin Moon Knight, associated with a Carrion Princess. In incarnate overlapping Twin Moons which strike the ground one after the other, violently shaking the earth with moonlight. In her childhood, she and her older sister Renala met these moons overlapping as though nestled against one another. So I'm not going to get this because I'm not in int build. And also you can duplicate the boss souls. And I haven't duplicated all of them, so there's still some... I don't know if you can duplicate the DLC ones in the base game or the base game ones in the DLC. I don't know, but I know that I left some open for the base game in case I wanted to dupe any DLC ones. But I can't use this, because that is way too much intelligence. But I'm definitely going to use it on my Magician build. Because I'm going to go through the DLC with all the builds. But this only takes 16 intelligence, so I'm going to get that. We can do that to kick that off. Alright. Ornate helm of Rolana, the twin moon knight fashioned from silver steel. Rinala, head of the royal family of Caria, was said to have given her younger sister, who renounced her lineage to chase after Mesmer, a gift of lustrous black hair. A second line, adorned with the lapis lazuli blue that is symbolic of Caria, its radiance is yet to fully fade. This looks very, very cool. So we can head back here so that way we can actually pull the weapons out before looking at them. And again, the lack of a scabbard, I really like. Alright, so if you press L1, which is the button to shield, then you do normal straight sword move set. And 
And then this is one-handed, the normal light greatsword move set. But two-handing the normal light attack. This looks very nice. Especially that like X scissor attack. That one. Oh, that looks so good. That looks so good. I don't know about that one because it can be like it's a poke, which don't tend to hit down very well, but you're jumping, which means your enemies are probably below you, so don't know about that one, but still. And then for here, we can put on intelligence to properly use this. Alright, so tapping it once throws two out. Tapping it twice throws another two out. Tapping it a third time throws out that fifth one. And then the heavy attack. So let's see. Can I properly wield all this? I can. So we can go with... Oh no, that's... We can still. So we can go with Rolana's Twin Blades, Blasphemous Blade, Icon Shield, all of this. We can absolutely do that. I'm going to have to put an extra three points into Intelligence, but we have one point. So my only problem with this, and this is the world's tiniest nitpick, is... I'm not a fan of the giant braid, but again, the world's tiniest nitpick. So, for this boss, absolutely incredible. Like I said, the only thing that I would possibly even recommend changing is maybe giving Lita just a, a bit more health. But her health is still fine, she made it through almost the entire fight. But still, here we went through Castle Ensis, because we can end it now. We got Rolana's Twin Blades, which is a very cool light greatsword. And it's dual wield. And Milady, a basic strength dexterity light greatsword. Which, just off first impressions is already looking to be one of my favorite weapon classes in the entire series. Like, even enough to challenge greatswords and twin blades. We also got a new armor set in Rolana's set, which looks very, very cool. We got a new spear in Mesmer's soldier spear, which was a chance drop. And we got Rolana's cameo as a new talisman. So good progress today, an entire legacy dungeon down. And with that being said, I'm very happy with the progress we made today. And, uh, yeah.